Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a very exciting Princess Cruises webinar. My name is Anna. I'm an industry relations manager here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. This webinar will run about 50 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, which is CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, John Cherneski. John serves as Senior Vice President North America Sales and Trade Marketing for Princess Cruises and Cunard Line. He has been with Princess for 28 years and leads a team of professionals providing business development and strategic sales support to travel advisors. And with that, take it away, John. Thanks so much, Anna. Great to be with you all today. Thanks for joining me. And while we are gonna be uh, with you for about 45-ish minutes, uh, I will promise to keep it entertaining. Uh, I always begin my presentations by really saying, keep calm and call a travel advisor. And that's obviously where you all come in. Uh, but now more than ever, I think we all should be keeping calm. It's a tough, uh, tough situation out there, but I am hoping that we will see some light at the end of this tunnel. Okay, here's me and my family. Uh, I am John Cherneski. And in the top there uh, is an interesting photo from last year. We were on Christmas Day uh, on the Sky Princess. We were cruising, and on that day, we were in... Uh, Belize doing some river rafting through the caves. If you've never done that, it's a really cool experience. On the bottom there with my wife and twin boys, John and Michael, uh, we were uh, on St. John's Island, which is right next to St. Thomas a couple years back. So just like to show those photos of me in, in the environment and doing what I love to do, which is cruising. And I want to say thank you. Uh, this was a screenshot from a video I did for National Travel Advisor Appreciation Day because of all the work you've been doing with your clients. If you're an experienced vet, you've been around for a while, then you've probably never seen anything like it. If you're new to the industry, you're probably thinking, what did I get into? But it will get better. And uh, I just want to say thank you for your perseverance. I was in my backyard with a non-alcoholic Arnold Palmer uh, enjoying myself, but it was my way of saying thank you. Uh, as Anna mentioned, I've been with Princess for actually over 28 years now. Hard to believe I passed that anniversary in July. Uh, here was, I found this photo, like now I've got 10,000 photos like every month, but back then it was a big deal to take a picture. And this was a, a photo I dug up of visiting the old Island Princess up in Vancouver back when acid wash jeans were cool. Um, so I have been around, but um, I want to say thanks to everybody at CLIA and one of my dear friends, uh, Charlie Sylvia, here's a screenshot from a video we did. I'm going to talk about the series later, but Charlie Sylvia at CLIA is one of my absolute favorite people. And if you've never had a chance to hear him speak, he is so passionate. He's he's lived the dream. He's been a travel advisor for a couple decades, um, but working with him was a pleasure. And I just want to show this funny photo we did, photoshopping of Charlie and I uh, from the classic uh, painting um, that you may recognize. So yeah, Charlie and I are indeed a couple. All right, now we've uh, all realized that in life things happen. We have to deal with change. And the reality is um, we all need something to look forward to as well. And hopefully that's a cruise on Princess or a vacation in general. And I did some uh, digging to find that the research studies, a couple of them had validated the fact that people actually derive most of their happiness from anticipating a vacation more so than even than the vacation itself. And there's a lot of reasons for that, which I won't get into, but I say now more than ever, as you're falling asleep at night, you wanna be dreaming about that cruise to Alaska with Princess next summer that you're going to go on as you're falling asleep. Because when you do think about the trip, your body actually releases a, a little boost of happiness through some a small amount of endorphins get kicked in. And that makes you happy. And every time you think about the trip, it's called free happiness. It doesn't cost you any more. So I would say now more than ever, you and your clients need something to look forward to. Uh, so let's book a cruise on Princess. But first up, when we talk about cruising now, it's all about, well, what's the health protocols? What's the experience going to be like on board the ship? And we have some great resources online. We've introduced some new standards as of this past week. But ultimately, we are waiting right now on the CDC. Uh, as of the, this recording of this webinar, we have not heard back yet. We are hopeful to be in the water uh, very soon, but we are waiting. The, the guidelines that were submitted on behalf of the entire industry and CLIA was instrumental in bringing us all together and making sure we were submitting these guidelines are going to be very consistent. So one thing you should know is that one cruise line is not going to be safer than another. We're all operating from the same platform as we always have. Little fun fact, you know, we get, uh, Charlie gave me this fact actually, people think of uh, norovirus, they think of the cruise industry. The reality is um, you are 750, 750 times more likely to contract norovirus 
uh, ashore at a land-based facility than you are on board. The problem is with cruises, the hospitals, nursing homes, and cruise lines are the only three groups that report their medical situations and health protocols to the CDC through the US public health. Nobody else has to. So we're very transparent. We always have been, always will be. I bring it up because we will continue to operate in that, in that realm. We are very transparent and these guidelines are very consistent. And so just know that we have these enhanced health screenings that's taking place. We are, uh, CLIA, uh, all of us have proposed we will be testing guests and crew before coming on board. The sanitization on board has already been robust, but it's gonna get even better. We're gonna ensure there's physical distancing going on. Uh, and if we can't have physical distancing, people are gonna be asked to wear a mask. The healthcare facilities on board with our doctors uh, have always been great and they're going to get even better with the training, the critical care capabilities, and the treatment um, protocols, the therapeutics that have been approved for anybody that does contract it. The ventilation is being expanded and enhanced with HEPA filters in certain places like the medical center, as well as isolation cabins. And then the shoreside experiences, we're gonna make sure that everything we have on board extends ashore as much as we can to make sure that people aren't bringing it back on board if that happens. So just want you to know, these are the six pillars, I would call them, of what we're looking at from a health and safety standpoint. Um, but just know it's evolving and we're waiting for the CDC, like I said, thanks to CLIA and all the efforts that they've done in coordinating that. Now, at Princess, we have what's called medallion class. If you're not familiar with it, I'm actually wearing my medallion here. Um, hopefully you can see me on the camera there, um, or maybe not, you don't wanna see me, I don't blame you. Uh, but medallion class was introduced a couple of years ago and it's groundbreaking technology. Everybody gets a medallion, it's free. Uh, there's no more cruise cards and you don't have to do anything with it. It's just there. You can wear it on your lapel. You can wear it on your wrist with a wristband or necklace, what have you. And then you kind of forget about it. And because everyone has one and there's multiple thousands of sensors around the ship, um, this great technology enables this amazing service to be delivered because it's not about the technology. It's about really, I would say, freeing up more time for everybody to enjoy their vacation by taking away some of the friction points of cruising. And I'm gonna explain that to you all now. The most important message I wanna get across to you today about medallion class is that we've introduced this before COVID and our experience was that ships that had medallion class introduced experienced a double digit increase in the net promoter score for the people that sailed on those cruises versus prior when they didn't have it. So net promoter score is the ultimate measure of satisfaction and we saw double digit increases. So people liked it, people saw the benefits of it. Now there are six main, with the, I have six pillars of the health and safety, now I have six pillars of, of the medallion class, although I'm gonna show you that it's actually expanding. I wanna to talk to you about these six because I think it's important that we not forget the foundation of what medallion class is and why it's so special. So don't worry about reading those right now. I'm gonna go through it and I wanna show you some screenshots of an experience I had last year actually doing some video uh, filming on board to actually tell the story of what it was all about. And so I put it to the test and I, I call it the Chernesky Challenge. Did it work? I'd love to test whether marketing promises actually work. And so I brought my trusty bobblehead with me because I don't like to travel alone. And if you don't think I have a bobblehead with me at all times, you are mistaken. So I went on board the Caribbean Princess and I was able to say, okay, we promise faster boarding. Here's the nice marketing shot of a family going on board. You get what's called ocean ready. The medallion is shipped to your home. Uh, if you're in the US, unfortunately, we can't do it for Canadians just yet. We're still working on that. So I put it to the test and sure enough, all you do is you walk in with your passport, whatever hand luggage you have. I arrived at the terminal, the nice lady greeted me, checked my passport and next thing you know, I went from curbside to a poolside uh, in a breeze and I was sitting by the pool drinking a Mai Tai, non-alcoholic uh, while I was working. And yeah, it was great, it was amazing. So that was the first thing, that embarkation is that much better. In terms of getting then to your stateroom, because the medallion recognizes you when you get there, it unlocks automatically. You don't have to take your cruise card out, swipe it or do anything like that. And so you can, in this case, uh, you know, get a couple of coffees and 600 donuts and bring them in your stateroom and just use your elbow to open the door. And what's amazing about this is that you think, oh, how hard could it be to open a door? Trust me, you get spoiled by this. And I was by day one, uh, thankful that I didn't have to get out my cruise car because you just get, like me, you get kind of lazy. Now I have to say about this picture, I find this pathetic that the, the wife is having to go fetch the coffee and the 600 donuts. And so men, step up and go get your wife a cup of coffee. I just wanna throw that in there. Now the other feature is that it allows you to find your way around the ship. Uh, when I did this video shoot on board, I can't tell you how many times I was stopped while I was filming people asking me directions. Well, because of medallion class and using the app, um, you can, it's like Waze um, at sea. You can find your way around the ship. How do I get back to my cabin? How do I get to the dining room? How do I get to wherever? 
and it will give you step-by-step -step directions. And if you have physical uh, limitations, there's ADA uh, approved um, uh, points to how to get there to make it sure that it's easy for, if you are in a wheelchair or have restricted, uh, restricted movement, it will do that for you, which I think is cool. Another great feature is that it will help you find people in your travel party. And so here's a photo of the mom busting the, the dad and the boy who went to get some ice cream, typical mom, throwing a wet blanket on the party, I'm kidding. Um, but what's cool about this is that you can find people in your travel party. I will always know where my twin boys are. Are they where they said they were gonna be or do I need to go and find them and grab them by the ear and bring them back to the cabin? Um, this is really cool. As an adult, you can actually turn this feature off. So if you are hypothetically the husband and you don't want your wife to find you, just throw that out there, um, you can actually turn it off as an adult. But as a kid, you cannot turn it off. Uh, they will always, uh, you are always findable, I like to say. So it's really cool for small groups and gathering. Hey, where is everybody? Oh, they're by the pool. Well, I'll go up there. I don't have to, to do anything. But if you wanted to message them, you could. You, there's a free messaging system within this Medallion Class app as well, which is also really cool. But you can also do gaming. So if you want some free games, some fun in the cabin or wherever you are, you can do it using the app. Um, also, if you if you like to gamble, but you don't want to step foot in the casino, uh, let's think of, you know, we come back on board and people are a little leery of other folks. You can actually gamble to your heart's content on your stateroom balcony if that's where you want to be and uh, try your lady luck and win some money. Um, also, we say that there's the best Wi-Fi at sea. So I put this to the test. It's called Medallion Net. And I love to show this picture um, which is the ultimate test, because who cares what I think, but this was uh, our BDM, Christine, her daughter, Sarah, they were on the Sky Princess last summer when the ship was delivered, sailing in the med, and uh, they went on the trip, but Sarah was still in school, and so she had work to do, so here she is on her balcony, and she's logged in, and she's uh, doing a chat with her teacher and filling out some homework, so that's how fast the medallion net is, and I actually got to experience this. I had a nice romantic dinner with my wife, and uh, what I don't recommend is that you take your phone out and stream a college football game, which is what I did. And so I just say on the plus side, it worked and the speed is so fast and that Wi-Fi is amazing. When I travel for work and I'm, I'm stuck in an inside cabin um, because they don't recognize who I am, um, you know what, I can FaceTime my family back home at, from an inside cabin because every cabin has its own access point. So the speed is the, is the same in an inside cabin as it is in a suite or anywhere else on the ship. And so that, kind of coverage around the ship is so important now. Um, then last but not least, in terms of delivery using the Ocean Now feature, this to me is the ultimate because the promise here is, well, you can get whatever you need delivered. And so since we've launched Medallion Class, we're actually expanding this. And so here's a screenshot of a number of items that can be ordered. It's not just your typical room service stuff. You want some ice, you want pillows, towels, robes, whatever. Yes, you can do that, but it's also food. And so I put this to the test and I was in the Piazza uh, and I had a drink delivered. If they, you order it, and if you want to sit in a different place, they will come and find you. I was up on deck here with the cruise director uh, enjoying a cocktail, non-alcoholic, of course, and we, it comes to us, and it's delivered to us, which is awesome. On my stateroom balcony, I had a Bahama Mama delivered to me, and so this menu of items uh, that's available has expanded greatly, and so you can expect even more things. Pretty much anything you can think of that you want delivered, no matter where you are, so if you're in that lounge chair and you don't want to get up to go get that bucket of beer or whatever, absolutely, you can do, <coughs> excuse me, you can do that, which is really cool. I love showing this testimonial from Christine, who was one of our travel advisor partners who sailed on board with us uh, at the very start, actually, the launch of a dining class. And she said it was the best cruise she'd ever taken, a very best family vacation they'd ever had, ever. And the experience of a dining class exceeded all of their expectations. So you can't say much more than that. Now, I mentioned that there is some enhanced features that are coming out, and I want to touch on those real quickly. And excuse me, I'm just going to cough real quick because I have something in my throat. Hold on. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. This is live. Um, so there's six main things that I want to talk about. One is that we have the embarkation experience I talked about. We are saying it is truly touchless. So from the time you get to the terminal to the time you go to open your door, Everything in between is touchless. And that is really to give you peace of mind, your client's peace of mind, that everything um, is safe and as clean as possible. And the arrivals will be staggered. So we're not gonna have everybody show up at the same time. We're gonna make sure that people can go into the app, select their time of when they wanna arrive, and we'll make sure that we separate the folks so there isn't as much queuing up or gathering. The safety drill. So we've actually um, just announced that we're gonna be enhancing the way this is done. You go onto the Medallion Class app. Let's say you land in, the, you get off the plane in Fort Lauderdale and you are um, you go on the app. You can watch the video right then. Everybody 
who's in the cabin has to watch the video, or you can watch it in your stateroom when you get on board, watch it on the TV. And then all you need to do is go to your muster station. So let's say it's the Explorer's Lounge. You go to the Explorer's Lounge, and they will check you that you're there because they'll see your medallion, and that's it. You don't have to sit through the drill. You don't have to bring your life jackets, none of that stuff. Super easy, and then go enjoy yourself um, during that great embarkation day. Health questionnaire and the health check-in. So this is, um, rather than going to the terminal and filling out the thing that says you don't have a stomach, cramp, a stomach illness or whatever, or you're not feeling sick, um, we will make sure that um, that's all done using the app. Um, did I mention that we're gonna be doing the testing? Yes, I did. And so that's important as well. So you know that people, both guests and crew, have been tested before they get on the ship. Touchless payments have always been part of medallion class, and we're gonna have some news on that, um, which I think is pretty exciting, which I can't tell you right now, but it's gonna continue to make the experience even better. And then this is really cool, real-time visibility into venue capacity. So you can know that, hey, we're gonna go to have a pre-dinner drink and the uh, uh, crooner's bar, and you go to look and say, wow, crooner's bar is full. Let's go somewhere else where there isn't as many people because we want a better um, physical distance. So the availability there, even if you track your events and you bookmark them in the app, you can know that, you know what, it's a little crowded and I probably don't want to go there right now. So you can be, be told before you get there um, what the situation is like. So all those things I think are amazing, taking the onboard experience uh, to the next level. Okay, let's transition into destination leadership. Princess is the destination leader. Hopefully you all know that. It's a bold statement because obviously uh, there's a lot of cruise lines that go to a lot of the places, but pretty much Princess has the world covered. You can see some great places here. I've been to a lot of these and I feel so lucky that I have, but I also look at this picture, these uh, montage of photos and I get a little bit of wanderlust and I want to get out there and travel. Uh, on my list, definitely Antarctica, never been as well as the Panama Canal, but we'll talk about some of those. Now, Princess has won a bunch of awards to validate that we are the destination leader. There's some great accolades here. Uh, the one I want to highlight is one that I think is a little suspect, and that is that I was voted the best sales executive by all travel advisors on planet Earth. I'm sure all of you voted for me, uh, or maybe you didn't. I'm kidding. But the rest of these are legit awards, which are great, but I put more trust in what two things, what the travel advisors think of us and what our guests think of us. So this slide shows that the annual survey that the Gallup organization does every year is a number of questions, and one of those questions is, uh, asking by destination to ask travel advisors, which brand do you recommend first for each of these destinations? You can see Princess was number one in Alaska, number one in Northern Europe. So think of the Baltic, think of the British Isles, think of Scandinavia cruises. Number one there, number one in Panama Canal, number one in Asia and South Pacific, and number one in South America. So thank you so much for all of that. We are now number two for going to Mexico on the West Coast. Our sister brand Carnival um, jumped to the top spot there. They have more capacity there now than we do. Number two for Hawaii, uh, which is not surprising because uh, we don't have the experience that NCL does just around the islands, but we have a great experience nonetheless. And then number three in the Mediterranean. We don't do as much in the Med as we do say in Northern Europe. And then number five in the Caribbean. We're actually a relatively small player in the Caribbean in terms of our scale, uh, which I think leads to this uh, ranking, but I do think we have some really unique ways to go there. But anyway, thank you so much for those accolades and I wanted to share just the recommendations of what travel advisor community thinks of us. Now, in terms of what our guests think of us, uh, which is ultimately the most important thing, this is a summary of our Captain Circle program and the top tier of that program is called the elite level of guests. These are people that have taken 16 or more cruises. Back in 2004, you can see we had just under uh, 12,000 and next year we're projecting to have 160,000. And what's great about this is that it shows to me a couple things. One, when people come to Princess and take a cruise, they stay with us. They like the environment, they feel relaxed, they get to see the world. Like I mentioned, the destinations are covered and therefore you get to go everywhere with Princess. But the service on board, which is the most important thing, is delivered by our crew. And I think this speaks, to the vo speaks volumes to that because when was the last time you went to any place, a restaurant, a resort, a hotel, and, said, and had the worst experience, like a terrible service, and you walked out and said, honey, God, that was awful. I can't wait to go back again. You don't do that. You don't typically go back, right? And so you go back to the places where you feel like you've been given great service. And I just want to say thanks to all of our amazing crew on board who deliver on this, which is what it's all about. Now at Princess, we, again, go to a lot of the same places as the others, but it's, a, the, it's the way we deliver the experience. Our goal is to bring the destination on board the ship from the moment you step foot. And we do that through a number of things, which I want to talk about based on a couple of key trades, but trades being a destination, um, but it's about the food, it's about the entertainment, it's about background music, it's about some enrichment events on board. You'll hear all about it, but that's what I think really separates uh, Princess. Now, 
I said Princess has the world covered. And here's all the key places that we go. And if you don't mind, uh, I wanted to walk you through some of them and just to give you an idea. You know, when we return to service, I get the sense that people are going to be wanting to cruise a little closer to home. Um, you know, so what we call the Americas. Uh, I did a webinar last week about that and really focused on that. And it's, I think it's true when you talk about the Caribbean, the Mexico, uh, Canada, New England, et cetera. So I'll talk about some of those. But also we're seeing great interest going to Europe. And so I don't want to leave that out as well. So let's first start with Canada and, uh, and New England. And like I said, we have gotten some awards there, which is great. But it's really this amazing season um, that you don't want to miss out on. If you'd like to see that uh, kind of that old feel of New England and the leaves changing, you got some great history there between the, kind of the colonial U.S., uh, as well as Canada, of course, and those seaside villages and the great food you don't want to miss out on and get to see some gems like Acadia National Park up in Maine. Uh, I actually lived in Maine for a year uh, when I was a wee lad, and I can tell you that it is a stunning place and just gorgeous. And uh, this, the coastline there is uh, you really have to see it to uh, believe it. But we have some great cruising from August through October. You have seven day round trip sailings out of New York, and you also have a 10 day run that's uh, what we call open jaw, which means you go one way from New York and into Quebec, and then it goes back from Quebec to New York. And so Quebec City is, I have been there, it is a stunning place, um, and you have to check it out. You get to go down the St. Lawrence River when you're going there. But um, otherwise, if you're doing the seven day out of New York, you, you know, great stops in Newport with all the old mansions, Boston, get some clam chowder, go into Maine, go to Bar Harbor. It's not Bar Harbor, it's Bar Harbor, trust me on that. Um, as well as Halifax, St. John, et cetera. So great opportunities for um, your there and Canada, New England is stunning. Next up is the Caribbean. And uh, I've been to the Caribbean many times. I feel very lucky to have been. We have year round sailings. It's always out of Fort Lauderdale. And you know, when you think of Caribbean, you think of beaches, you think of getting in the water, snorkeling, some fun water sports. You know, to me, the Caribbean is what cruising is really what most people think about. Uh, we also have some great history there, the mine culture, as well as the local islanders. I mean, just a lot of fun and uh, one of my favorite places to go for sure. Now I wanted to show this map just to give an indication of where Princess goes in the Caribbean. This is a blank map. So this is, let's call this the before and I'll show you the after in just a second, but it shows you the Caribbean, a little bit of Central America, South America, as well as of course the tip of Florida there. And this uh, represents all the places that we go. These are all the ports that we go to and it's color coded based on the Eastern uh, itineraries, the Western itineraries and the Southern. And so why don't we focus on each of those main three, just to give you an idea of what uh, we're talking about. So the Eastern Caribbean, uh, again, you're out sailing out of Fort Lauderdale, you're gonna get a stop in Princess Keys. In the bottom left there, you can see a sample seven day uh, run where it's going to Princess Keys, you go uh, St. Martin, St. Thomas, a couple days at sea back to Fort Lauderdale, which is uh, just nice and relaxing balance of port and time at sea. But there's other itineraries that will take you to all the other places that you see there uh, in red. And I've, I'm so lucky again to have been to so many of these places. St. Thomas is one of the most popular places uh, in the Caribbean for sure. And uh, one of the highlights is a little place called Megan's Bay. And I wanna show you this amazing photo of Megan's Bay. It is just ranked as one of the best beaches in the world. Uh, I would say it's not to be missed. And we have what we call a more ashore program, which means we stay in certain ports longer. So you get to experience more of the port even into the evening so you can have dinner ashore if you want to do that or experience a nightlife. And so St. Thomas is one of those places where we typically are staying late. And a little tip uh, that we introduced last week is that uh, on our webinar is that, um, you know, go do an excursion in the morning, go have some fun, maybe go jet skiing or snorkeling. And then in the afternoon, head out to Megan's Bay when it's not as crowded. And as the sun's going down, it's just the perfect spot to enjoy yourself and you know, it's really calm. There's not a lot of uh, surf and so you've got families. It's, it's just a great place to relax. I wanna go there right now. I'm sure you do as well. Okay, Western Caribbean. Um, you can see all the ports there. Uh, and this was actually one of the trips that I, this was the trip that I did last um, December on the Sky Princess. Uh, really great opportunity. Uh, the combination of the tropical islands as well as some of that history in the Mayan history, getting into Cozumel, Belize, Roatan, et cetera. And uh, Tulum is one of the most amazing places uh, that you'll see. Uh, very well preserved ruins right on the shore, uh, just outside of Cancun. So if you go to Cozumel, you take the ferry across and go check it out and uh, highly, highly recommend it for sure. Southern Caribbean, um, this is uh, opportunities for those with a little more time. Uh, so you can do um, a 10 day cruise round trip out of Fort Lauderdale, the sample there, St. Thomas, Dominica, Grenada, Bonaire and Curacao. 
Um, this was uh, a trip that I did with my family a couple years ago. We cruise a lot. Have you noticed? I'm very spoiled. Um, and again, it's a little more off the beaten path type of places. Grenada is one of my favorite places because it's not as, as busy or as visited from a cruising standpoint as some of the other islands. But Bonaire as well is just uh, stunning uh, for sure. And this is in Curacao. This is at Willemstad, which is a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the main port town and there's beautiful colors. It's been preserved. Uh, it's just a wonderful place to walk around, have some food and drink and really get to experience uh, the locals. Now, I talked about bringing the destination on uh, to the ship, and when we're in the Caribbean, we have a, a formal program called Rhythm of the Caribbean, and this is where we bring the food on board. We bring, of course, we make the, the cocktails. Uh, we got some entertainment, we got some hands-on activities, you can learn to play the steel drums, and we even bring parrots into the piazza. So these are the beautiful birds, I'll show you one here. Um, great opportunity to check that out. And uh, if you've never seen these birds up close, they are stunning and they are loud. And when they speak, you listen. Uh, and with that beak, if you feel like having your you know, finger gnawed off, just go stick it out there and they'll be happy to bite it off. Actually, I'm kidding, don't do that. But they are beautiful uh, birds. Like I said, I've been um, to the crib with my family. Here's some pictures. Uh, this was actually, most of these pictures were taken in Bonaire, doing some great snorkeling, as well as Curacao. Uh, bottom right there, we were doing some river rafting in Grenada. Top right, we were at Princess Keys, and I was doing this uh, snorkel experience with the stingrays. And if you, uh, this is a sea cucumber, I'm kissing, and if you kiss a sea cucumber on the mouth, you get seven years of good luck. Unfortunately, unless you're a marine biologist, it's impossible to tell the mouth from the butt. But I am pretty sure I guessed correctly. And here are some pictures from the trip we did last year on the Sky Princess, uh, doing that Western Caribbean run. It was with my extended family, my sister and her family. Um, and just having Christmas on board was really wonderful. Uh, I've done a New Year's cruise on, on board as well as the, the Christmas cruise and just amazing on the Sky Princess. Top right was the sloth that I got to uh, interact with uh, in, uh, Ro on Roatan, which was amazing. Okay, next up is the Panama Canal. Like I said, we are the number one ranked brand there, and it's also uh, the number, we are the number one brand in terms of the people that we carry. We take more people there to than anybody. And it is a combination, I would think, of amazing engineering, the great history, and what these people did to build this canal back in the day is just stunning. There's actually two canals now, and we bring a narrator on, so as you're going through the locks, you can understand what is happening. So highly recommend a balcony cabin if you're going to the Panama Canal, but if not, there's some great viewing platforms on the upper deck. But also, in addition to that, you get this great experience of the wildlife, uh, because when we go into places like Costa Rica, you get to go to this amazing, rainforest and i think this is so cool because you just get to especially living in los angeles get to get away uh feel like you're truly in uh the, the jungle there and uh, get to interact thanks to our partnership with discovery communications and animal planet we have an exclusive opportunity to go to a sloth sanctuary um in costa rica in limon when we stop there and these sloths you have to see them uh, to believe them i want to show you quickly a map of what a panama canal cruise is like and so again there's two options you can do a 10-day round trip cruise out of Fort Lauderdale, um, which is what we're picturing here in the bottom right. It shows you that itinerary. And it's a great combination of Caribbean cruising plus going into the canal. But you don't do a full transit of the canal, but you get to go into through the Gatun locks um, and you get to enjoy that experience you overnight inside the locks. Um, and uh, you go back and then you go to the Caribbean. So you get to Grand Cayman, Grand Cayman Ocho Rios and Jamaica, et cetera. And so it's that great mixture of the two. Um, if you want to do the full transit, it's more of a, a longer trip, obviously. It's 15 days. We call it ocean to ocean. So in this case, we're going Fort Lauderdale to LAX. We also have uh, up to San Francisco. But you got a couple of weeks and you want to do the full transit. It's less in the Caribbean, but you do get the full transit. And you also get some Mexican ports. And a little trivia, if you look on the map, you'll see that um, I always think in my mind, if you're going from the Caribbean to the Pacific Ocean, you're going to start in the east and you're going to end in the west. The reality is the way that the isthmus of Central America turns, you actually enter the locks on the top there. That's on the west side of where you actually exit near Panama City. So you kind of start on the west and end east at that point. Anyway, a little trivia for those of you out there interested in that stuff. But some great opportunities in Panama Canal. Now, Hawaii is near and dear to my heart. It's the place of my birth. Uh, it's where I'm, I was born. Um, so back in the day, it's uh, near and dear. And it's, I've done this cruise with my family, as you'll see. Wonderful opportunity, combination of, of course, uh, the beauty, the wildlife, the volcanoes, especially on the big island of Hawaii. Um, and you get to go to all four of the most popular islands. So on one trip, you're covering Kauai, Maui, Oahu, and the big island of Hawaii. 
which is actually my favorite island of them all. Um, and you know, when you're on a board and you get to get a chance to go see a luau, especially when you're um, you know having that opportunity with a more ashore program that we have in Honolulu, it is something you don't want to miss out on. So here's an example of a round trip, and we do it you know where you don't have to fly. So for those of you that based on the West Coast or clients that don't want to fly out to Hawaii, you can either sail out of Los Angeles or San Francisco. We're showing you the round trip example out of San Francisco there. You've got some days at sea, which I actually love. So you're spending four days on the way out, uh, and I think it's five back with a stop in Ensenada. But those times on board, I think, are the most relaxing, and you really get to connect with your family, uh, loved ones, new friends, yourself, just kind of unwind and get ready to go. Um, and then, you, like I said, you go to all four of those um, ports. But you get that late night call in Honolulu where we bring a folkloric show on board. Uh, which is awesome. And I want to talk about the onboard program, which is called the Aloha Spirit. So those four days and, uh, that you're spending on the way out there and even on the way back, you can spend your time learning to play the ukulele. Uh, we teach you that as a class for it. Lay making, hula classes, all that stuff so you feel like you're in the destination. We bring the, the food on board that is uh, some great dishes that are um, you know specific to the region. And that festival, like I talked about in uh, Honolulu, the folkloric show is amazing, especially the little kids and they're doing the hula dancing. You can't beat it. Now, it was several years ago that we cruised there as a family, about nine years, I think, to be exact. And so my boys were a lot younger and a lot cuter back then. Uh, we visited the battleship Missouri, which is right across from the Arizona Memorial, which is near and dear to my heart, uh, which I'll explain later. And then we were in Waimea Canyon in Kauai, which is the Grand Canyon of uh, Hawaii. It's stunning. And then on the bottom there, you can see I actually got lucky taking this picture. We were on a whale watching trip. You can see the, the tail fluking for the whale as it was diving down, Sapphire Princess in the background and then Maui. So just a wonderful, wonderful trip. Now into Mexico, we actually began, this was our first uh, place that we started cruising back in 1965. And you think of Mexico cruising, first thing I think of is margaritas, but really great opportunity for some fun in the sun and getting out there, doing some fishing, uh, some great adventures on land, culture of course, and the live music that we bring on board. Uh, it's a wonderful place, uh, a wonderful way I should say to visit a special special place. And we have some great opportunities and different cruising there. Uh, the Mexican Riviera, did you know, trivia question, Princess coined the term Mexican Riviera back in 1965 to make it sound like the French Riviera. And so we coined it and now we don't get credit for it. But we do seven day trips out of LA, a uh, round trip, as well as 10 days out of San Francisco. And then we have opportunities. So those seven days, you're typically um, you're not heading all the way down and up into the Sea of Cortez. That's, as you see, Laredo and La Paz. That's when we do these 10-day trips called the Baja Peninsula and Sea of Cortez, which are really off the beaten path. Um, but if you only have seven days, great opportunities to visit. Um, Cabo is my favorite of them, I would say. But uh, I've never been to La Paz or Laredo, but I can't wait uh, to go. And obviously, you get some. Here's a, a, a church that's in Loretto, but it really, uh, you know, you want to get in, get, in, get ashore, walk around, and get to see that. Like, do some great experiences there. And then the, a destination coming on board. Like I said, we've got the margaritas, of course. We also bring on mariachis. Uh, we bring on some great food, some local cuisine that we partner with a local chef for. And the Dia de los Muertos festival. Uh, I'm so thankful I could pronounce that. The Day of the Dead festival. We may have some fun with that and uh, hopefully you will enjoy it. So next up is the California Coast Cruising, and we have been awarded some great accolades here for that. We're the really the only line that really focuses on these types of cruises. Most are doing two or three day trips going from like the LA for the, uh, the spring up to Alaska for the summer. We actually give a, a full season of these seven day trips if you want, but it's a great opportunity to see wine country, get some great food, the coastline, marine life. I've done this cruise with my family, and I'll say that for somebody who lives in Los Angeles to drive down and get on a ship and take a seven day vacation was so easy, not having to get on a plane, but you also get a chance to visit places that you might not otherwise visit. Even though you live here, you don't always take advantage of that. And so that's what I loved about it. Uh, like I said, the wine country is stunning. We've got trips not only to Napa Valley, of course, but also to the Santa Ynez Valley, uh, where there's some great wineries and great uh, tastings that are available. And I wish I was there now. Uh, we have opportunities for or seven day uh, trips round trip out of LA or San Francisco, and we do offer this year round. Uh, we've got the late night or, or even overnight stays in San Francisco and San Diego, and a uh, really great way, like I said, to see some of these amazing uh, ports along the California coast. And we bring the experience on board through this uh, program where we are, it's kind of a Hollywood insiders, where we have some uh, former actors or singers or 
people behind the scenes, makeup artists, uh, writers, you name it. We bring them on board and really get you a chance during the sea day to interact with them, hear their story, and it's just our way of kind of sharing a little insights. I had the chance uh, to visit with somebody who came into our office who was part of this program, and I want to show you a picture of him here. Any idea who this gentleman is? Okay, um, he's on the right, by the way, I'm on the left. Um, his name is Pete Best, and he was the original drummer of the Beatles, and he actually got kicked out of the band, uh, and Ringo came in right before they became famous. So if there's anybody that should be bitter at life, it's this guy, because he missed out on being one of the most famous people in the world. But I will say his attitude, his positivity, his perseverance is what it's all about. Hearing his story and hearing the formation of the Beatles is, is wonderful. And like I said, I've done the trip with my family, uh, and here's some pictures uh, from a few years back, again, back when my boys were a lot cuter, and going to Alcatraz. In San Francisco, on the bottom right, you can see the ship docks right on the Embarcadero. So you just walk off the ship and you're right there, Fisherman's Wharf, all that is right there. Um, and we had a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, I've just announced um, last week that our summer cruising is expanding on the West Coast with Mexico and California coast opportunities in the summer. So May through September, they're all round trip out of LA on the Crown Princess. You got seven day options to Mexico or California coast. There's also some four and five day, what we call getaway trips you can try. We just announced this. So for those clients looking to stay close to home during the summer months for vacation, we are very pleased to introduce that. Okay, now let's jump over quickly to Europe. And I wanna talk about that. And like I said, we have a really strong interest there. Uh, we're there from the summer through the fall. You think of Europe, you think of the history, you think of architecture, you think of the amazing artists, the statues, et cetera. Great exposure to different cultures and what i love about europe cruises is that if you've not traveled there much what's great is it's a great sampler so you can understand where may, where might i want to go back to what did i love the most but to unpack once and see multiple countries multiple ports over your cruise experience i think is what it's all about now i want to do the little map trick with you here and show you the before and after uh so you'll see here a blank map of europe and on the inset there on the left is greenland because we are doing some calls there now as well. So this is the before, um, and then this is the after. These are all the ports that we go to, which are pretty stunning. And so there's only 110 places that we go to, ports that we go to, but who's counting? Uh, so in terms of the Mediterranean, uh, here's a sample 12-day cruise from Barcelona to Rome. And if you think of a sampler, to be able to, you know, to go to start in Spain, go to, go to a port in France, go to Corsica, go to uh, Rome, go to a couple of places in Greece and Croatia, all within 12 days, it's pretty amazing. And the way we deliver on that experience is second to none. And uh, I will say you're gonna probably need a vacation when you come home because it's tiring because you're seeing so many places and you wanna maximize every minute that you're in port, but hey, that's what it's all about, right? And then in Scandinavia and Russia, uh, like I say, we're the number one brand uh, there just great history great culture we do this this is a 12-day scandinavia russia round trip out of copenhagen that's cph there at the bottom give you an idea of where you're going uh we do an overnight in saint petersburg which is amazing make sure to go to the hermitage museum uh stops in helsinki stockholm oslo and Tallinn in estonia which is actually one of our top rated ports people don't expect much and they go there and think oh my gosh this is gorgeous and they certainly love it British Isle cruising uh, sample here. You've got a 12-day round trip out of Southampton. Uh, we're basically swinging around um, all of England there. You get stops in Ireland, of course. Uh, you're up in Scotland. You get to go find Loch Ness, see if it's there. Stops in Edinburgh. Make sure to go and see that. If there's a late night call there, you get to go see the military tattoo up by the castle. You want to check that out and then jump over to France as well and get a, hopefully get a chance to go in to see Paris. Okay, that's a little sampling of Europe. Hopefully, uh, for those clients that you have that are interested, you can check it out. All right, now this picture, guess where this is? This is not New Jersey, this is Alaska. Uh, and I wanna talk a little bit about Alaska. Princess is uh, very proud that we have been ranked the number one cruise line in Alaska for a, a couple different ways we measure this. Number one, we carry more people there than anybody else. Uh, we've been awarded the best in Alaska by Travel Weekly for 16 times. And we are the number one recommended brand there thanks to that Travel Advisor survey that's been done for 19 straight years. And so we don't take this lightly, uh, these accolades, we don't just rest on them and say, oh, well, we're good, we don't need to get any better. Uh, I think we really try and own Alaska and make it as good as we can. We've been sailing there for more than 50 years, but it's not really about the history, it's about kind of what have you done for me lately. We've got the medallion class that's uh, up there and our experience uh, is amazing. And then cruises and cruise tours. So I wanna walk you through what that is like. Now, with our partnership with Discovery, I mentioned an Animal Planet, 
We offer some exclusive excursions, which are awesome. And I have to say, it, Alaska is a great place to bring kids to have multi-gen, multi-generational trips, plan for grandparents all the way down to grandkids. It's a great way to have family reunions. And uh, I think the way we deliver Alaska is really special. And those programs we do on board, which I'll talk about, are second to none. Okay. There's three ways you can visit Alaska with Princess. You can see Alaska doing a round trip cruise via the Inside Passage. It's a great trip, nothing wrong with it. You get to see more of Alaska with our one way cruises that we call the Voyage of the Glaciers, which I'll talk about. And then you really get to see all of Alaska with our cruise tours, which is a combination of cruise, rail, and land. Uh, I will definitely talk a lot about that. Now the Voyage of the Glaciers I wanna talk about just because of how special I think that trip is. It's a seven day trip between Vancouver and Whittier, which is just outside of Anchorage, or you can do it the other way around. On that trip, you get two glacier viewing opportunities. You get to see Glacier Bay National Park, and then you either see Hubbard Glacier or College Fjord. And uh, very special both of those days. If you've not sailed up next to a glacier, you're missing out. It is wonderful. On these trips, you get more of the inside passage because you're going farther up into Alaska. Um, and uh, I will show you a map here. Actually, I think it's the best way to show it. And we've got some great opportunities. Um, to see more because if you see it in the blue, that's the round trip inside passage. So let's say you're doing Seattle, you go up, you go catch a can Juno Skagway, and then you come home and you cruise in the inside passage. It's great. But if you're doing the Gulf, the voyage of the glaciers, all the way up the Gulf, you start in Vancouver and you do all those same places, and then you go all the way up to Whittier. So you're just seeing more of Alaska. Uh, when it comes to bringing the destination onto the ship, we have this amazing program called North to Alaska. This has won some awards, a Magellan uh, Award with Travel Weekly. It's about bringing the food on board at the National Park Rangers, of course, when we go to Glacier Bay. On the top left there, you can see the hunky uh, lumberjack. We put an ax in the hands of our guests. I'm not sure how that passed the safety protocols, but it did. Uh, and Ketchikan's famous for the lumberjacks, and they do a demonstration pier side. We actually bring them onto the ship and do something in the theater, which is really cool. And we teach guests how to throw the ax, which actually they do. It's really cool. My favorite though is puppies in the piazza. Remember the parrots where they bite your fingers off in St. Thomas? Here in Skagway, we do what's called North to Alaska with puppies in the piazza. And these sled dog puppies are amazing. If you're not already doing a tour with the sled dog puppies, this is your uh, chance to experience them. It's a very controlled environment. You get your picture taken. It is super cool. Uh, I mentioned the axe throwing, so I don't want to jump on that, but he is a dreamy lumberjack. And we also have a program called Cook My Catch, where you go on a fishing uh, excursion, and whatever you catch, a halibut or a salmon, you bring. we will bring it back on board for you. You don't have to put it in your backpack or anything because it gets kind of smelly. And our chefs will actually cook it for you for dinner that night for your table. So talk about fresh fish, which I think is really, really amazing. And all the great shore excursion and tours that we offer, my recommendation for your clients that are going to Alaska, do not wait to get to Alaska, to walk down the gangway and say, honey, what are we gonna do today in Juneau? Get your trip planned, uh, get stuff lined up because the most popular trips, especially like the helicopter tours, they will sell out and you don't wanna miss out on those amazing experiences. So work with your clients to make sure they plan as much as possible. Okay, when it comes to the cruise tours, uh, Princess is really iconic for this. People think of us when they think of cruise tours. And the reason you go on a cruise tour, so this marketing photo is four models all looking at each other, not paying attention to the big mountain in the background, which is Denali, which is the highest mountain in North America, 29,020 uh, feet. Actually, I forget the, it's over 29,000. It is amazing. Um, and so I want to explain to you what is a cruise tour. So it's a cruise. Uh, obviously, you do a seven day trip three ports plus Glacier Bay National Park, which is critical. Glacier Bay is where it's at. And then you also get a second glacier viewing experience at Hubbard or College Fjord, which I think I mentioned. Then you get on a train. It's a 500 mile journey into the heart of Alaska. And it is stunning, I have to say. And then you get to one of our, oh, actually from that, from that trip, your same day, you're going right to Denali from the ship. You don't have to do an overnight in Anchorage or anything like that. We own and operate everything, the lodges, uh, the crew, the, the, the train cars, and of course the ships. And so it's a seamless experience. When you get to that lot, every lodge, or sorry, every cruise tour gets to visit Denali National Park, which again, you'll want to see that mountain. And um, all of the cruise tours are going to stay at the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge. And then you can go to one of our other five lodges, which is pretty cool. Now we have at Princess, what we call, uh, it's exclusive, our direct to the wilderness rail service. So when you get off the ship in Whittier, you don't have to take a bus to go somewhere else. You literally walk off the ship, walk across the parking lot, and get on 
this train, which is amazing. It's uh, these glass domes, you have viewing platforms, great service, and that transition from the ship into the interior to go to Denali that same day is really something to behold. I guess I just love the train experience, but the wildlife you see, the beautiful nature, mountains, the ocean, and then into the interior, you transition into a different world. Princess owns and operates our lodges. Like I said, we have five of them. The Denali Lodge, which is right on the uh, right near the entrance of the park, but actually you don't actually see the mountain from Denali area. So that's why we built the Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge, where you have a view of the mountain from the lodge itself. Copper River and Kenai are the smaller lodges, a little more quaint, um, really remote, and then Fairbanks. All of these five lodges are situated on a stunning river. And I wanna show you a map so you can see kind of what I'm talking about here. You've got those five lodges in green and then all the different key points uh, that you've already seen. But just to orient you in terms of how far up Fairbanks is and then Denali at the north side of the park and McKinley Moore at the south side is pretty stunning. Similar to your actual cruise, don't have your clients get to your cruise tour and not have planned what they're gonna do. There's so much fun activity you can do there from fishing, whitewater rafting, you name it. Do not wait to get there, plan this ahead of time so you can maximize your trip. A lot of people ask like, what is the best time to go? Uh, I would say every month, I've actually been to Alaska in each of these months uh, for various business trips in the past. And I will say that it's all, you can't predict the weather, first of all, but little insights as to what each month typically brings. So May and June are actually less rainy. Um, and so, but you don't know what you're gonna get, right? Never predict the weather. August and September are, uh, the, the leaves are starting to change. If you want sunlight, if you wanna see what it's like to have the sun out at midnight, uh, June and July are the times to go. It is amazing to see that. In September, as you get to the end of the season, you might get a chance to see the Northern Lights. I will say that you have to go as far north as possible to kind of see them, and it's it's iffy at best, but um, you just never know, right, what you're gonna see. The whales are around all the time. Uh, the July is the peak month, especially for killer whales, although I've been there in September, went on a whale watching trip and asked the guide to make sure we saw some killer whales, orcas. He said there's no chance, and of course we saw a pod of killer whales. So what did he know? Bears are always out, but May and June, they're more active because they're still coming off of hibernation, right, and they're still hungry. Uh, the fishing is always there, but June and July are the peak months. And then in terms of when to go from a pricing standpoint, if you've got people that are value conscious, the, the shoulders, as we call them, May and September are typically uh, the cheaper times. But right now, you just don't know what next year is going to bring and how much capacity there's going to be. So I would highly recommend your clients get in now and don't wait because, uh, again, you just don't know what you're going to see. Speaking of which, this is a picture taken on the bridge of the Star Princess by the captain as they were sailing out of Ketchikan last year. Now, Ketchikan is farthest south. The fact they saw the Northern Lights, he actually woke the ship up at like midnight to say, hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Don't be alarmed. But you can see the Northern Lights if you come out on deck. So bundle up and come out. That's the fun of a cruise to Alaska with Princess. You just don't know what you're going to see. Captain Tuvo did a great job getting everybody out there so they could see it. A couple pictures of me and my family from our trips there. Uh, we did the, the dog sledding trip via helicopter in Juneau. That was just a highlight. Uh, I did take the picture of that eagle in the bottom left there. We were in Ketchikan doing a Zodiac trip. Uh, they were all bundled up. It was a hot day. It was beautiful. And then, of course, uh, Glacier Bay with my family. Now, I have to say Glacier Bay. Here's some more shots of Glacier Bay with Marjorie Glacier. This is the iconic uh, glacier that you'll see. On the left, you can see the calving process where before and after as the big chunks of ice fall into the ocean. Uh, if you're going on a cruise to Alaska and you're not going to Glacier Bay, you're missing out. So make sure, Princess mostly goes to Glacier Bay on almost all of our cruises, but uh, there are a few that don't. But uh, I just wanna encourage you to make sure your clients get to see Glacier Bay because it is something uh, to behold. I feel very lucky uh, to have been there. Okay, we're wrapping up the presentation. You've all been very patient. Thanks for listening in. And I wanna say we're very excited uh, that we have new ships coming on the horizon. We just took the handover uh, delivery of the Enchanted Princess. She's going to be setting sail with us early next year. Discovery Princess uh, is the other ship in the class. These are all sisters of essentially the Royal, but more like the Sky Princess, because there's been so many changes from when the Royal came out to now the Sky, um, that really, I think it's the Sky class now, because you got the Sky, you got Enchanted, you got Discovery, and the Majestic as well, um, which uh, was has been out there for a little while. But these ships are just a great class of ship. We're very excited for these new sisters coming online. And we have two brand new ships, totally new design, coming out in 2023 and 2025, which are LNG, liquefied natural gas powered. So very, very good for the environment. Okay, with that, I wanna wrap up by talking about Princess Plus. 
Uh, this is our, it's not a promotion because it's always available. You may remember we did our best sale ever last year, but we actually kept it going and created a fair type, which is Princess Plus. And I hope you recommend this to your clients. And this is not a money grab. This is not trying to, you know, get more money out of them. But I really think, and I recommend this to my friends and family when they cruise. The reason we created this is because it gives the best value without question to our guests. Everybody, these are the three most popular things people want to pay for when they get on board. Their drinks, their Wi-Fi, and the gratuity. So the premier beverage package actually includes tips as well. And if you don't drink alcohol, then it doesn't matter because the value is still there from the bottled water, the premium coffees, the sodas, uh, energy drinks, you name it, uh, smoothies, all are included. And so the value is still there. The unlimited Wi-Fi, the medallion that I talked to you about, uh, is included, it's unlimited, and then the gratuities are paid. Now, if you were to go on the ship and buy all three of those things on day one, it would cost you just over $95 per day per person. As part of Princess Plus, it's only $40 a day, and that is a 60 almost a 60% savings. It's available in all staterooms. All third, fourth berths, upper berths can get them if they want on all cruise lengths from three days or longer. And so we've made it as flexible and easy as possible to book. Uh, hopefully you can explain the value to your clients because you don't want to miss out on that close to 60% savings. Now, it's uh, part of our promotion. We're actually adding on to Princess Plus uh, what we call the Upgrade Away Sale, which is a free stateroom location upgrade through November 2nd. So you get a little bit extra in terms of that uh, cabin uh, location, which is going to be better. Now, I mentioned Charlie and the series that he and I did at the very start of this presentation, if you remember. Uh, it's a long time ago. And we actually did a training program with our Princess Academy. Princess Academy is our award-winning, best-in-class online training program. So if you're new to the industry, uh, highly recommend it. When you become certified as a Commodore in Princess Academy, after you've completed all the necessary courses, you get a free cruise from us. That's our gift back to you. And it's the best way to experience the brand and you get a free trip out of it. So we, as part of Princess Academy, did this a program called Sales Expert. And it's really trying to teach basic sales skills um, but it's really important to really connect with your clients and use relationship-based um, selling along some other tips. And Charlie helped us create the program, and he and I did some filming and some role-playing, which was super fun. So I want to thank Charlie for that. But we've had a number of people complete the course and have commented on how great it is and just engaging from a training uh, perspective. For those that have served in the military, Princess has the best military benefit in the industry. Like I said, it's near and dear to my heart because my dad was in the Navy. Here he is. He was a captain of the Battleship Missouri. Uh, back in his, the day before he retired. And then you get up to $250 in onboard credit as part of this. Uh, that varies based on the voyage length. And it's for all US, Canada, UK, Australia, retired or active duty, they get registered in our system. And it's our gift to them as our way of saying thank you. It's just the money for them to spend uh, on board. And then, sorry for the noise in the background, have a little work done on the house. Um, we also have, I wanna mention our easy pay program. For those people that are trying to manage their cash flow, a little better rather than getting final payment and that big bill hitting on that month. It, you, it really allows you to basically pay off over time what you owe for the cruise. There's no fees involved, there's no cost, you can change it at any time. It's super easy and so I just wanna recommend that. I also wanna recommend you follow me on Facebook. Go into Facebook and search Princess VP Sales. Don't look for my name. In case they fire me, they wanna keep the account going uh, but I promise to keep it entertaining. So if you're not already following me, please do Princess VP Sales. And with that, I think I've almost hit my 50 minute mark. We're three minutes over. I just want to say thank you so much. Me and my bobblehead and my puppet, because I also have a puppet, want to say thank you. I'm going to go back to this slide while I take some questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. We do have some questions coming in. I will try to get to them all. Um, a lot of people are very excited about the medallion class. Our first question is from Nancy, um, who is wondering will the medallion work on all cruises, or do we need to get a new medallion with each cruise? Okay, so I want to answer a question that you didn't actually ask, but when you said all cruises, I forgot to mention early on that when we come back online and we return to service, all of our ships will be medallion class enabled, okay? So uh, as we introduce the ships back in, we will make sure every ship you're selling will have medallion class on it. So just to note that. To answer your specific question, which is a great question, I forgot to mention, sorry, um, the medallion is specific to that voyage. Your name is on it, the ship is on it, the date is on it. And that becomes basically, along with your passport ID, that validates that it's you and you're getting on that ship. And so when you go ashore, you just need the medallion as um, basically your old type of cruise card, right? And so if you go on another cruise, you get a new medallion. So they're collectibles. Basically, you take it home, put it on the mantle, whatever you want to do with it. It's yours, but we will issue a new medallion for every cruise. Okay, perfect. 
And our next question from Michelle also about the medallions. Will deliveries through the medallion be in place with specific protocols? Will crew leave your order at the door or will they come in your room wearing a mask? Yeah, in terms of stateroom deliveries, we are still working through what those protocols look like. Uh, we don't have the answer to it right now. Um, I know in Europe, they've introduced uh, some of those standards where I think you're leaving it at the door. Um, I don't wanna give you an answer today because I honestly don't know and I think it's evolving. Um, but the medallion class allows your item to be ordered and then you, it, we will find you. So if, if let's say you're in one room and you've ordered something and you've walked away, we're, we're going to find you and deliver that to you. And you can actually order it um, through any crew member now. And so as an example, and please don't do this because they're going to get mad at me, but the captain could walk by and say to you, hey, how are you doing today? Everything okay? And you could say, captain, I'm having a great day, but you know what? I would love to get uh, a Budweiser. And the captain can take out his phone, order that for you, walk away and go do his job, which is not actually delivering you drinks. Um, and the a crew member will find you and deliver that to you. I think that's so cool that, and you don't have to have your phone out. If you don't want to bring your phone, that's totally fine. I recommend it because you get more service out of it. But just having your medallion is all you need. Okay, great. Our next question is from Marissa, who is so excited to try Princess and is wondering when the Commodore sailings will be listed. Yeah, well, so hopefully you've been achieved, you've achieved Commodore status, uh, and if so, congratulations. We have pulled back on announcing them just because of all the uncertainty of, we didn't want to put them out there, have you book, and then if something got canceled, then you have to go through that hassle. And so we're kind of in a waiting pattern, and once we again hear from the CDC and get our return to service guidelines approved, and we get a little more clarity on our cruising uh, pattern and when we're going out, I expect we'll then introduce our Commodore sailing. So I don't have an answer for you today, and I don't even want to guess as to when we'll introduce that. So I would just say watch this space, and we will communicate once we have them published. Okay, that makes sense. And our next question, we have a lot of people wondering where to find Princess Collateral, and specifically the Alaskan chart with all the animals that you have up. Yeah, so our onesourcecruises.com page is our agent portal. So it's Travel Advisor Portal. That's that's where you should be going all the time for all sorts of marketing materials, um, insights on your business uh, based on how you have your login. Um, it's really the one-stop shop that I would say. Notices from me, updates on health and safety standards, all link from there. Uh, and so onesourcecruises.com is really your go-to place. Okay, fantastic. Our next question, we have two more. This one is from Betty, who is wondering if both guests in a cabin have to purchase Princess Plus. So both guests, from a, if you think of the lower berths and then the upper berths, so the guests one and two need to both purchase Princess Plus. You can't have one do it and one not do it. Um, and so both have to do that. But the third and fourth guests can, in fact, buy the Princess Plus, right? So if you have teenagers, let's say, that are in the third and fourth berth, and they're going to want the bottled water and the, you know, energy drinks or whatever and the um, Wi-Fi and the gratuity. So that makes sense to have them. But if you've got younger kids and you don't think you're going to take advantage of it, then you can actually put them on what's called Princess Savers, which is our fare only. So we really only have two fares, the Princess Savers and Princess Plus. Princess Plus is the value add, the richness. But uh, if you realize that um, those those guests, those third and fourth guests aren't going to take advantage of it. You can make the make the booking as Princess Plus for all four. And then right now you have to give us a call to change those the third and fourth guests to Princess Savers. Um, but the bot, the first two guests do have to both get it in order to take advantage. Because otherwise I would get it, Princess Plus, my wife wouldn't, and she'd be drinking all my drinks the whole time. And we can't have that. <laughs> no, definitely not. And our last question is from John, who is wondering how the impact of the sale of the Sea Princess and the Sun Princess, how that will impact itineraries. Yeah, so uh, it's always sad to sell off a ship that has been so part of your your history. My personal career at Princess, um, back in the day, I used to help design the ships uh, from a new build standpoint, and the Sun Princess was the first ship I worked on. So it's always sad to see a ship go, but I am excited, like I said, to deliver some of the new ships. Clearly, anybody that was booked on the Sun and Sea Princess is going to be impacted because those voyages are being canceled. Uh, we've made some arrangements um, in North America where uh, most of those itineraries aren't affected by those ship sales, but unless you were flying to Australia to do those cruising. Um, the Sun Princess, we've replaced with some Crown Princess sailings out of LA, and so people can switch over there. Um, and other itineraries, it's just the unknown of, are we going to replace it like for like? And in many cases, uh, we haven't been able to. And so 
We have given some rebook offers for people who are on those affected sailings to hopefully come back and take another cruise with us, maybe someplace else in the world. Okay, that makes sense. And that was our last question. So thank you, John, so much for all the information. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. Appreciate your help. Bye, everyone.